My plan was to start this video with me coming out and then opening my mouth and I would start to sing and there would be, it would be this triumphant song and I would bring the components towards the camera and the components would flash and there would be animation of the components spinning across the screen and it was all going to be very incredible until I stumbled forward going whoa, whoa and I would roll forward and then come up holding the, the cover of the game and then it would cut to me wearing this funny hat and I would um, talk a little bit about the game a little bit and then it would cut and there would be like still shots of the game as I explained the rules and then maybe um, cut to me a black and white picture of my face talking about the game and then later on I would review the components uh, first I would I would reach forward and adjust the camera and it was all going to be this in incredible um, homage to uh, lots of different things but then I realized that all I really needed was to show you one of my most favorite components um, of any game and that is this flowchart right here for the game shapeshifters. It's easy to to want to be something you're not. Um, we're, we're imperfect people and and being very intimate to ourselves we see our mistakes. I think that's one of the reasons we play games to be be all sorts of different things be it uh, uh, merchants or or um, heroic folk with swords or space guns. Um, so that's why I think Mike Wasson and Neil Softy uh, made this game where you can be all sorts of different things and I'm really shocked that there aren't more games about this about being able to change shape because I think it's sort of a classic um, a classic sort of thing to to um, dream about to be able to, to polymorph to be able to change to be able to to be one thing one turn and another thing another turn and see how you could handle different situations and different shapes and I think one of the reasons more people haven't done it is it's it's probably a complicated thing to do in a contained environment of, of a board game, um, which is what makes this great, great, excellent, excellent, beautiful flowchart so great and excellent and beautiful. It, it it allows you to do that. It it you can't be whatever you wanted. In order to do that, you would need some sort of more um, uncontained, free flowing um, story type uh, game. But you can be quite a lot of different things. And they talk about in their book, um, their instruction book, about how they 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 reduce duplication because based on what these things could do. So you can be a bison but not a buffalo because they're very similar. Um, some of the things are fantastic, some of the things are prehistoric. Some of the things are just regular creatures, like a wolf, or an eagle, or, or a manta ray. Um, and the way, I'll explain how it works, the way you can get around this chart is, is quite neat. So this flow chart that I love so much is one of two maps that you play the game on. The other map, um, as you can see, is a, it's a hex encounter sort of map, and the game's very much descended from the hex encounter war games. You use a, you use a combat table to resolve combats, and there's d6 rolls for all sorts of things that you have to get within a certain range in order for certain things to happen. Um, very simple sort of one of those games. Uh, it's, it's a simpler hex encounter game. Um, along with that though, while your wizards, here's two wizards here, a blue and a yellow wizard, are moving around the map and doing different things, and there are scenarios for the game that will tell you what sorts of things you're doing, um, every turn you're going to have the option of moving where your form is on this flowchart. So each wizard has a battery and that battery is basically their spell points, their um, the number of points they can use to change shape. So say, say the blue wizard has 7 and the yellow wizard has 14 on this battery level track down here. They're both going to um, take into account what's on their, their battery check, track, how many points they, they're in, and secretly decide on what form they're going to become. So, Blue, for, Blue Wizard, um, say he wants to turn into a bison, he would follow the track, one, two, move two spaces, um, and that would cost him one, two, plus 
four on the bison, six energy. So he would have one left at the end of the turn. Now the form that the people choose isn't revealed until after everyone's chosen. So you can either do it on a trust basis or secretly record what you want to be. Now the yellow person doesn't want to be a mammal. So he goes to this node. See this word here, node. This is one of my favorite words in the world. And I'm glad it's on one of my favorite components in the world. So when you're at a node, you can change to any other node by paying the node cost. So he wants to turn into a jungle. So he's going to go to the plant node, which costs one, and then down to jungle, which costs three to move to jungle, and then seven for being a jungle. So that's going to cost him one, four, eleven points. Now he's a jungle. After they change form and reveal their form, they roll initiative, and their initiative's different based on what um, form they're in, and then they take action. So they move and then they do something. Generally that something is um, attacking the other player, depending, or going to pick up an item. A lot of the most fun scenarios in my book involve getting items. Um, because otherwise it's just you're just kind of charging at each other. But if you have to get items and run away, there's a reason to do different um, sorts of sorts of creatures. So, like, say you need to get an item fast, you might want to turn into an eagle because eagles can move really fast and they can fly. And if, say, you need to keep that item away from someone, you can fly up in the sky and then they have to turn into something that can fly to go after you. Um, and so that's great. Another great thing, a lot of the the different creatures have different certain special abilities. So if you're a giant spider, you can ensnare someone in a web. Or if you um, are the Jesus lizard, you can run across the water, which is not something most land creatures can do. The version of Shapeshifters I've been talking about is the 10th anniversary edition, which is also the kind, the, the edition you're probably going to find in stores unless you find it used somewhere. You might find the older edition, that, which came out in 1990. Um, it's definitely a game, even the 10th anniversary edition, that knows its own history. It gives you the original cover, which I actually think fits the game better than this. It's more of a, it has more of an, the game, although it's a 10th anniversary edition, it has an older feel. It feels like one of the older Hex Encounter games, not, not like a game that was made in 2000. Um, and the rules are split up. So the, the additions that they made in the 10th, anniversary edition rather than going back and editing it they put it in a separate booklet so some people like that some people don't some people feel like it would be simpler just to have them all together but there you go um, components are not um, really a selling point for the game there are little bits of cardstock that are hard for my fingers to handle um, but I think that's that's the the price you pay for getting a, a smaller game that is allowed to um, explore these ideas that are maybe not otherwise um, otherwise available. And I think, for me anyway, the, this cardstock and these maps that have the, the folds um, are well worth it, especially when you get such a beautiful, beautiful flow chart. Uh, I'm glad there's this game that lets us be something we're not on a turn-by-turn -turn basis to, to keep changing with our whims. That way, I think, when we're in our regular life, we're able to be something a little truer to ourselves, something that can make different scenarios for this game, because I think it's, it's quite easy to make scenarios for this game um, and explore lots of different situations with lots of different shapes, and that's, that's a lot of fun. Shapeshifters.